Hello and welcome to a new video in my Spectrum Analyzer series. In this video I want to complete the testing of my DDS board. Revisiting the schematic of the DDS board, it takes a reference clock input at 64 MHz and then the DDS chip converts that into a signal at 10.7 MHz that is cleaned up using this monolithic crystal filter with a center frequency of 10.7 MHz and then finally converted back into a square wave using the inverting amplifier circuit here. In the previous video I've measured the clock input as well as the bare output of the DDS and the signal uh, after cleanup and of course I also measured uh, the output signal of that of that circuit. Now what I want to do in this video is I want to sweep across the pass band of this crystal filter. I'll show you what that means and I'll show you my setup. The setup is very similar to what I had last time. I'm still generating the 64 megahertz master oscillator signal using that either kit breakout board. I have received my own master oscillator PCB but unfortunately I uh, made a, a serious mistake there. Th those SMA uh, footprints are far too close together and if I were to populate all of them uh, I wouldn't be able to tighten to fit actually to fit the screws uh, of the the male SMA connector because they're just too close so uh, <laughs> I just have to redo that one and space them uh, farther apart. So that that guy still generates the 64 megahertz signal and that guy still synthesizes a signal an output signal around 7.7 .7 megahertz that is then filtered by the monolithic crystal filter here at the back and what i want to do is i want to measure the output power of the resulting square wave and to achieve that i will connect uh, this output to the logarithmic ampli uh, to the logarithmic detector uh, which is connected again to the ADC as I've done before. So that just allows me to use the spectrum analyzer software to measure the uh, power delivered into the logarithmic amplifier. Now one thing I cannot do is I cannot connect this straight uh, like that and the reason for that is uh, if you look at if you look at the schematic of the DDS, it does uh, the the output is not a real AC. The, there is a DC offset because the output alternates between zero volts and five volts. So uh, if I so there is a DC offset, and if I were to connect that straight into the lo, the, the logarithmic detector um, at DC, this impedance conversion transformer looks like a short so I would essentially uh, short out the the output of the DDS board to ground and of course uh, I, I shouldn't do that so uh, the solution to that is very simple I just use one of those guys which is a mini circuits MCL uh, BLK89 it's a it's a DC block so essentially it's just a capacitor and that capacitor provides AC coupling and uh, that will then remove the DC offset. So I'll connect uh, that guy to here and then I'm allowed to make that connection over here and this is my setup. Now what I will do with the DDS board is I will command the DDS to a frequency of not exactly 10.7 megahertz but I will actually be sweeping from somewhere below 10.7 megahertz to somewhere above 10.7 megahertz and I'll show you with the data sheet of the crystal filter why this is so. The data sheet of the monolithic crystal filter that I'm using comes with this nice graph that's showing what's going on. On the y-axis we have attenuation uh, so at frequencies around uh, the center frequency of the filter we have a low attenuation and at frequencies far off that center frequency uh, the attenuation is high which means that at high attenuation not much of input frequency components uh, make it to the output. Of course that's the whole purpose of that filter is to get rid of any frequency components that are not close to 10.7 megahertz. Now looking at the actual specifications of the filter we see that uh, we get a maximum insertion loss of 
uh, of 2 dB, which means that um, the output signal around the center frequency will be no less than 2 dB down compared to the input. And um, the pass band is at least uh, 7.5 kilohertz in both directions, which means that we have a total span of 15, 2 times 7.5, 15 kilohertz um, of pass band, which, which actually should be somewhere around there, uh, where the, um, uh, the insertion loss is uh, no more than 3 dB. So just, you know, th that's, that's what we'll be looking for. Um, the, um, the pass band is at least 15 kilohertz, and then um, at frequencies farther off than, than 7.5 kilohertz from the center frequency, uh, attenuation will be much higher. So uh, that means that if I command the DDS here to a frequency that is much lower than 10.7 megahertz, uh, there should be no, in theory, there should be no output power delivered to the logarithmic detector. If I'm straight exactly at 10.7 megahertz, uh, a lot of power will be delivered to the logarithmic amp, uh, to the logarithmic detector, and of course, again, if we're much higher, or actually, this is a fairly decent filter, so uh, we don't have to be much higher. Uh, actually, we we have to be somewhere more than 7.5 kilohertz higher than 10.7 megahertz. Um, again, we won't have much uh, power delivered. Uh, to the, to the logarithmic detector. However, there is a catch. And to demonstrate that, I'll show you what I get when the cable is not connected. And then I will uh, be... So I'll also disconnect the reference input. And you'll see why. Uh, if, so the first measurement will be just like that and then I will connect this guy and then I will connect uh, the reference input as well. And, and what's, what's, so I won't tell you because um, I can make this a little quiz until later uh, what is to be expected. Um, I just tell you that as long as this guy is not connected the DDS chip is not synthesizing um, the uh, the output signal and as soon as I connect this like so the DDS chip will be sweeping so you might pause now and think about what what is to be expected while I set up everything uh, to proceed all right so I hope this will turn out okay with uh, both recordings displayed simultaneously. Here on the, on the computer, I'm sweeping from 10.625 megahertz to 10.775 megahertz, which is a span of 150 kilohertz. Now remember, the filter has a pass band of 15 kilohertz, so this is 10 times more than the pass band. And as in the previous test, uh, I'm using this special test, which means that the DDS is, is sort of like a tracking generator. The DDS is directly outputting the frequency that you can see here. Right, now, um, this is with nothing connected. It's already running. So basically this is the, the noise floor of the instrument somewhere at minus 100 dBm. Of course the input of the logarithmic detector is not terminated, but um, that's about right. Now, as promised, I will first disconnect the master oscillator, which means that the DDS is now not running. So you might, <laughs> you might ask yourself whether something is going to change or not. Let's see. Right. Isn't that weird? When I saw this first, I was a bit confused, but of course, the answer to what's going on is fairly simple. Looking at the schematic, we get this um, this inverter down here and if this inverter is not driven by any input signal uh, it will and that's the case now because uh, the uh, the DDS is not running uh, it will start to self oscillate due to that feedback loop and that's exactly what we're seeing is sort of the the DDS is self sporadically spurously self oscillating and we get this very weird um, uh, 
a signal that is that is alternating like crazy because because this guy is just oscillating in an uncontrolled way now that was the catch because i was assuming to see a nice filter curve just like sort of the inversion of what i showed you in the data sheet but of course under these conditions that will not be the case so now i will connect the reference input of 64 megahertz and what we what we're getting now is right around 10.7 megahertz uh, we're saturating the input of the DDS here and around that we're getting uh, the same weird crazy oscillations we got before so I will place two markers actually uh, I've got 10 divisions here and I said before that um, the, the total span here is, is 150 kilohertz so one division horizontally is 15 kilohertz and we got one two three four four and a half so that's four and a half times 15 and that's somewhere around 70 and to get the actual numbers I will place markers the um, the lower bound here is is 10.661 megahertz and the upper bound is right on uh, 10.730 megahertz so by subtraction that's probably very close to, to 70 kilohertz indeed so uh, what seems to be working is we 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 sort of where the filter is supposed to uh, not attenuate we're saturating the logarithmic detector and when the filter is actually attenuating uh, the DDS signal uh, it doesn't have any output signal which means that uh, the, the square circuit is oscillating um, so that seems to work fine except for maybe you might be wondering why is this more than why is this more than 15 kilohertz I said before that the pass band was 15 kilohertz and that's 70 kilohertz so here again uh, if you're into quizzes you might pause here and think about that okay so I think there is at least two reasons for that the first one is if we if we look at the data sheet of the crystal filter again we see that the the pass band bandwidth the, the 3db bandwidth of the pass band is at least uh, plus or minus 7.5 kilohertz so it's a minimum figure it's at least 15 kilohertz of span but it could be more and in our case we seem to be observing more but nobody is going to complain if it is more because it's a minimum figure in the data sheet you can use this figure to make sure that uh, your desired signal the signal of a desired bandwidth makes it through the filter and in this case the bandwidth um, should be no more than 15 kilohertz uh, according to this specification then again if we look at the stop band uh, bandwidth we see that at plus or minus 25 kilohertz so 50 kilohertz at least we should be 18 db down and of course this gradually increases uh, for frequencies further off the center frequency uh, again this this I think this graph demonstrates this nicely because uh, somewhere um, when you're exceeding the pass bandwidth here um, you, you get that that filter uh, skirt here that is rising in attenuation but it's doing so gradually and then you get of course the farther off you are the more attenuation you have um, and that is one reason I think we can be off more than uh, more than 15 kilohertz but if we look and we've measured sort of 70 kilohertz apparently so that would be even uh, farther off uh, than those 18 db down so there is some extra effect because that that alone doesn't explain it and in fact if we look at the schematic uh, what we have here is uh, I so I drew here some sort of generic um, uh, symbol here but what this actually is is it is an inverter but this inverter has a, has a CMOS push-pull output stage which means that actually uh, because this is AC coupled it will uh, center around half rail and then 
uh, if the, the excursion at the input is small enough, it will not act as a squaring circuit, but it will in fact act as sort of a linear amplifier. Um, there is an application note on that uh, that I might link in if I manage to find it. So even if we're not uh, hitting, if we're not um, squaring up the signal nicely because it is too low in amplitude, we're still amplifying it sufficiently uh, for the logarithmic detector to saturate. Uh, I think those are the two effects that are of importance here. Uh, if you see something else or generally have something else to comment, please do so down below and I say thank you for watching.